Now, Terry, this is obviously a very big topic, so there's a lot of places we could start. I thought maybe I'd start with some of the recent surveys that show that there's a bit of significant decline in trust in media, not just in Canada, but uh, worldwide, really. I just, your thoughts off the top, why do you believe this is happening? Well, there, I think there's a few reasons for it. Um, first of all, people are starting to sense more and more that everything is starting to sound like an op-ed. And, you know, this is obviously a problem because when people read the news, they're looking for information without uh, opinion. So readers start to sense this bias and this opinion. And the problem of bias and opinion showing up in something that's labeled straightforward news or investigative reporting is those labels, news and investigative reporting, tell the reader how to read what they're reading. Just like if you go to a bookstore and you go into the horror section, and you pick up Frankenstein, it's in the horror section, it's not in the comedy section, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this is important, right? So this is part of it. Um, I also think that things like the coverage of the convoy has done great damage in Canada, especially to, uh, to the media's trust. Uh, this began when you know Canadians turned on their, they opened up their news or they turned on their echo shows and they listen to the CBC news briefing for the day. And CBC starts off with things like uh, so-called convoy, so-called freedom convoy. And so by adding that term in front of things, and, and I just wanna clarify, it wasn't just C the CBC, there was other news stations as well doing this. Um, this was unprecedented because this hadn't been done uh, in front of any other protest or social movement in Canada before. And I'm actually working on a data-driven piece with uh, another professor, Professor at Concordia actually, to trace the use of so-called and uh, show that this actually was unprecedented. Um, so those are some of the reasons why it's happening, why, why trust is failing in, in journalism. Now, you're obviously talking about uh, bias and objectivity. You know, some would argue that, it's, sorry, it's, it's uh, impossible to be truly objective. Um, do you think that uh, something has changed dramatically in that respect in recent years? Well, I think that people uh, fundamentally misunderstand what objectivity in journalism means. So objectivity in journalism has never meant that somebody could be completely objective. It was always known that people had biases and opinions. The purpose of objectivity in reporting is to make sure that somebody has in their investigative process, in their writing process, clear, observable uh, methods that are objective. So it's the methods themselves that need to be clear, repeatable, observable, verifiable. And this is important because you need to keep the same type of process when you cover each story. And this is to meant to protect against bias, to guard against bias. It's an, it's an abs it would be absolutely ridiculous to assume that uh, anybody could be completely free of bias. So it's strange that this has kind of, uh, this false idea of um, what object objectivity means has kind of filtered into journalists today. So it, this should be well known. Interesting. So what else has changed in the industry that is sort of leading to this, this blurring of, of opinion and news? Are there sort of structural changes in the industry in your view? What, is, what has led to this, uh, this increasing change? Well, yeah, I think there's been a loss of what I like to call uh, gentlemanly reporting or gentlewomanly reporting. Um, when we think of uh, reporting that we've thought of as professional and objective, you can, you can think of people like Peter Mansbridge. We never knew what Peter Mansbridge's opinions were. We never knew what his biases were. He was always professional. He didn't talk badly about his subjects, his interview subjects. And, you know, we've lost that. So I think this has come from uh, a turn where... Uh, Mansbridge himself did not have journalistic training. So now all journalists are going to J schools and J schools are actually attached to universities and universities themselves have their own goals, political goals, PR goals, habitus, mm -hmm. norms and beliefs. And these are infused into journalists now. And so now we see them showing up in news reporting. So I think that's uh, where this is coming from. Interesting. So a change in the almost professionalization of the industry. We're going to take a short break and be right back.